All right. Um, I think um, we're going to start now. We, we have about um, 14 people. We're expecting a lot more than this. Um, can anyone from the Beach House School tell us exactly what's happening to the other teachers, please? Is, is the principal online? I think the principal did say, the principal, if the principal is online, please can you just tell us your name? So that subsequently I can refer to your name rather than calling you principal. Yeah, so if you can see, um, if you don't have audio or video, please, you need to check your settings. Because everyone else can, um, can hear me and then they can see what I've got on the screen. Okay, now since we've started recording, I think we're gonna start is now 10.42. That's about 12 minutes after the time we're supposed to have started. So again, um, good morning, um, everyone. Uh, my name is um, Kay Badike. Um, I'm gonna ask um, two members of my team to introduce themselves as well. Um, so we're gonna be providing this training for, for teachers in, in your school. And please, I would ask you to please watch carefully and follow us and if you have a device that you can use, you can even try some things yourself. And I think part of what we're gonna do, we're also gonna have exercises that you can do um, while the training is going on. So please make yourself comfortable and be ready to learn um, about the Google environment. And if you have any questions, again, the Q&A document, um, check, check um, the chat box, um, but then you can put that um, link again so that for those who came in late, they can see the, the link. Um, so if you have any questions during the training, please put it in the Q&A document. Everyone can share that document. We can see it, you can also see it. That's the, that's the, um, that's the beauty of Google collaboration. Um, and we're gonna do more things like this where you can, we can share things together as part of this um, training. So if you have any questions during the training, please don't forget, put it in the Q&A document, which the link again has been sent, has just been shared with you. Um, just one minute. So that's the link again for the Q&A document. Click on it, I know everyone can access it. So click on it and um, whatever questions you have, please put it there. All right, so now, um, let's let's start. Um, a, a lot of schools, um, if you ask a lot of schools about IT, a lot of schools regard having a PC a PC lab with a few PCs in, in their ICT lab as digital school, if you, if you call it that way. They believe once you have um, <clears throat> Once you have a PC lab and you have a few devices there, that is it, you're an IT school. But that is not the case anymore. Things have really changed. And um, I'm gonna show you a few things. Um, if you look at this slide, the companies on the left are companies who were very slow to adopt technology. And the companies on the right are companies that have taken over the business of those companies on the left. Some of you will recognize some of these companies. Um, you have um, Kodak. You can see Blockbuster. Um, I'm not gonna go through all of them, but look at the companies on the left and then look at the companies on the right. Um, some of you have gone abroad will know about Blockbuster video. That used to be the huge, I mean, Blockbuster had huge warehouses 
acres and acres of land where they had videos. There was virtually no video you wanted to watch that you would not find in a blockbuster um, shop all over the world. But Blockbuster today does not exist anymore. They are out completely out of business because they've been taken over by, by streaming, Netflix, and all sorts of other stuff um, online. I mean, nobody takes any huge um, video anymore <laughs> to go and play at home. There are no video recorders anymore these days, you know? Okay. So some of you will also know about Toys R Us. Some of you have kids and um, have probably gone abroad um, on holiday or something, you would have gone to Toys R Us to buy toys, to buy toys for your kids. Now, Toys R Us have gone, they've gone bankrupt now, and a lot of their shops have been closed down. Why? Because their business has been taken over by loads of apps now that where kids can play online games. Yeah? Um, and even, even take taxis. I mean, um, when I come to Nigeria, um, because I travel, I come quite often to Nigeria, I use Uber when I'm around, and you still have all these old taxis. And if you go to corners of bus stops and also some places in Lekki and Nikoi, you actually see these taxis, they are still parked in the corner of the street, waiting for a passenger to come and say, sorry, I want to go to somewhere. But so you see a lot of them parked in the corner of the street, no business, because their business has been taken up by, by Uber. So people like me, when I come to Nigeria, all I do is I have my Uber app. I go on Uber and I get a, a cab to take me wherever I wanted to go. Yeah. So, so this tells you that sometimes we can all feel very comfortable with our business and think, well, we've got customers and nothing is going to happen. But what this has shown everyone is that if you don't embrace technology, if you are slow to embrace technology, you'll be surprised how things can happen that you, you may, that might affect your bottom line and affect your business. And COVID is a very, very good example. A lot of schools now have not been able to provide proper online classes, proper online classes to their students because they've not been, because they're not ready, they were not ready for it. I mean, people use WhatsApp, you know, for, for classes, I mean, that is just not it at all. They use WhatsApp and send things to kids in WhatsApp. That is just not it at all. So COVID is actually a good example of what can happen that can completely change a business model. So what we're going to show you today is the Google environment for what you can call hybrid education. So it's not just for online. You can also use this even when you have physical classes as well. So and the teachers who are going to teach you today, so these are really teachers themselves who have actually used this environment for over, for over one year now. And the two of them that you have here, they, they are what, what we call Google Level 1 Certified Teachers. So Google has certification for teachers. So this is a global certification. If you have the Google Level 1 certification, that means anywhere in the world, outside Nigeria, anywhere in, in the US, in, um, in Africa, in, uh, in Europe, anywhere you go, you are recognized as a global teacher who can teach in the Google environment without any problems at all. So this is, you are globally recognized as a Google environment teacher. And the two teachers who are going to take you today are actually level one certified teachers by Google. Yeah, and that's what we're also going to encourage all of you um, after this training and as you start using the tools that you also try to seek for certification, but it's always good to get your experience first and then you seek for certification. So that means with your certification, you are recognized globally, not only in Nigeria, but anywhere in the world as somebody who can, who can teach in the Google environment without any, any problems. Yeah? Okay. Now, I'm going to move on. So when we talk about Google for education, people, most of the time, people just think about Google Classroom. That's what people talk about. Once people hear Google, oh, Google Classroom. No, 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 no. There's so much more to Google for Education than just Google Classroom. Google for Education is actually made up of three parts. You have what we call the Chromebook, which is the device, the hardware device. And then you have what we call G Suite for Education. And then you have Google Classroom. So Google Classroom, Google for Education is not just Google Classroom. It's so much more than that. And we're, we're going to see more of this now. Now, so the first part of which is Chromebooks, this shows you 
if you look at this graph as it changes, starting from 2012, it shows how Chromebooks are being used all over the world. But you can see Africa, it's only in South Africa that uh, you see Chromebooks. I mean, there's virtually nothing happening in Africa, but if you see elsewhere all over the world, Chromebooks are being used. So, but of course, this, this is changing. This, this is up to 2017. Um, we have schools in Nigeria now that are using Chromebooks that my company has introduced to, to Chromebooks. So Chromebooks are really devices that were manufactured just for education. So these are devices which from scratch, they were made just for education and they will transform completely the way teaching and learning is done in any school that adopts Chromebooks. I actually tell schools now, any school that goes now to buy a new PC or a new tablet, that's just money down the drain because Chromebooks are far superior. They are far better than PCs and they are made for education. And when you are in the Chromebook environment, you actually have loads of educational apps in that environment that will completely transform your teaching and learning. And your students even will be over the moon with, with Chromebooks. I'll just tell you a few things about Chromebooks. The battery lasts for 10 hours. So they made it so that when a child comes to school, they can use it in school throughout school time and not have to charge the Chromebook. So the last what, um, 10 hours, it starts up in less than six seconds. Let me repeat that again. It starts up in less than six seconds. Actually, what I'm using here is a Chromebook. So I'm actually displaying this thing that you're looking at from a Chromebook. So when I wake up in the morning and I come into my study and I switch on my Chromebook, in less than six seconds, I'm logged onto the system. I've used Microsoft in my time um, when I was working for Shell. And I can tell you there will be times where you start your PC and then you go for a cup of coffee, you, you chat with your friends, and then you go back and check whether it's finally started or not. Sometimes you find it hasn't started, you go back again and talk some more. And then maybe when you come back, you find that, okay, it's finally started. And then one thing you also do is you have to pray that you're not presenting and Microsoft does not decide to do an upgrade while you are doing a presentation or doing something. <laughs> and then you find your PC is frozen or, or whatever. In the Google environment, that does not happen. Upgrades are done in the background. So you can use your Chromebook, even when it's doing upgrades, the upgrades will be going on in the background and you will not, it will not disturb you at all. So, but, but what I so much more to Chromebooks than just what I've just said, they have, they have normal laptops. They also have what we call touch screen. What I have here is actually a touch screen where you can use your fingers like a tablet. So it become, you can use it like a normal laptop because it's got keyboards, but you can also turn it into um, a tablet if you want to. Yeah. Um, I'm going to move on. Now, so when we now say just fit for education, so like I said, the Google for Education is not just classroom. So these are all the products that comes with G Suite for Education from Google. And um, let's see how to use these products today. I'm not going to go into details right now, but you will see how to use these products um, today. Now, besides, these are the ones that Google provide in this environment. But besides the Google ones, you also have loads of apps that, they, that um, other Google third-party partners are provided in this environment. For instance, I know of a school that in, this, in the Chromebook environment, in the Google for Education environment, they've actually found about 40, 40 educational apps that the school is using for different things, for different subjects. So that's the kind of thing you get in the Google environment. So when you hear about Google, don't think about just Google Classroom. There's so much more to um, Google for Education and just Google Classroom. Okay, so I'm, I'm going to stop there. This just shows you, again, this is not up to date, but it just shows you Google for Education is not something that is new anywhere. It's being used all over the world. So you can see here, it's 40 million plus students that teachers are using Google Classroom. And 19 million plus are using Google for Education. And Chromebooks are being used virtually um, all over the world, including Africa. Right, so I'm, I'm, I'm going to stop here. And um, I want um, um, Bode and um, Joseph to first introduce themselves, and then we'll start with the trading proper. Again, if you have any questions from the, what I've just presented, 
um, put this in the Q&A and we'll make sure we answer your question. Thank you. So, Bode and Joseph, please introduce yourself. And I'll, I'll stop sharing. Okay. okay, good morning, all. My name is Bode Dowdin. I've been a physics teacher for over a decade and a Google One, Google Certified Educator of Level One. And I've been using Google Environment for the past two years. I'll be taking you through some apps this morning. I work presence also with MKB Consulting. Okay, good morning all. My name is Joseph Igo Sihonuja. I'm a Google Certified Educator. At the same time, an ICT instructor for decades. I've been working with MKB on this project. And I'll be one of your instructors this morning. Thank you. OK, um, so um, Joseph, I think you are the first person to start, right? So you can uh, yes. go ahead. OK, please okay. go ahead. Let me share my screen, please. If you can see my screen, just type yes in the chat box. Okay, thank you very, very much. So we can proceed. So for today, we're looking at about 10 products from the Google apps. The first one we're looking at is Google Drive. After Google Drive, we go to Google Calendar. We move on to Jamboard, Classroom, Sites, Docs, Sheets, Slides, Chats, Meet. So we'll be taking them in turns. So for the first section, the first part, which will be handled by me, I will be taking Drive and Calendar. So once you sign in to your Google environment with your email address given to you by your school admin, you get to this drive environment. The first thing you see, if you get to the drive environment first, your drive is going to look empty because it's the first time you're using it. And to get there, you use this waffle or Google Apps menu. So you just click on the waffle, you click on drive. It will bring you here to the drive interface. This is a drive home interface. In the drive home interface to the top left, you have the drive icon. If you're far away in the drive, you can just click on the icon. It will bring you back home to the drive home interface. Then you come down a little, you have new, where you can create folders, upload documents, create different types of documents. You have priority section, my drive, shared drive, shared with me, recent, stabbed, being and the amount of storage you have used, you see it here. To the middle top, you have the search in Drive. So as you use your Drive environment, as you work in the Google environment, all the documents you'll be creating, that students will be sharing with you, that you'll be sharing with your t-shirts, your management, all of them will come straight to the Drive environment. So the drive will be populated as you keep using it. And the number of documents you have will be increasing. So sometimes to get a document becomes difficult. So you use the search in drive. If you remember the name of the document, you just type it, you run the search, and it will give you the search. Now, first thing first, if you got if you get to the right top right, you see the settings icon. As soon as you log in into your drive environment, make sure you make these settings. You click on settings, you have two options, settings and keyboard shortcuts. Click on settings. When you get to the settings, you have three options to the left, general notifications and manage apps. Under general 
section of it, you have storage, you have convert uploads. Please make sure you check mark this. And why do you have to do this? Before now, you have documents in Microsoft formats, Microsoft Word, Microsoft Excel, Microsoft PowerPoint. And those documents, you are going to move them into the Google environment. So as you upload the Google environment, if this setting is made, those documents will be converted immediately to the equivalent form in the Google environment. Once you're done with that, you click on done. Okay. So now let's get started. So once you get to the environment, the first thing you need to do, you need to create folders in the drive to organize your work. Everything you'll be doing, make sure you create folders to hold those documents. So to create folder, you click on the plus sign at the top left. The plus sign in Google environment represents new. So wherever you see, you just know you are creating. You click on it, you have this option folder. You use the first option to create a folder. So let's assume I'm going to create a folder right now. Click on folder. And the folder name is, uh, let me call it first term materials. First term materials. So click create. In seconds, the folder is ready. This is a folder. I can create another folder right away. This time I can call it first term exams. The folder is created. So you see the folders that I have here. But in the drive, when you get there, you will see this folder called classroom. Please do not touch this folder because it contains all the work that you do in Google environment in the classroom. So all your work in the classroom and all classes you belong to will be in this folder as sub folders and documents. So but the folders we just created, you have the first term material and the second term materials, uh, exam, first term exams. So you can use these folders after creating them to organize your materials. You can also create subfolders. So you just open the folder double click or right click then select open the folder is open you can see the pathway here my drive first term materials so to create a subfolder inside this first term materials folder just click on new again click folder this time you can call it videos videos so i've created a subfolder inside this folder called video. Then I can create another one, call it um, lesson plans. Lesson plans. The folder will be there. Okay, now we've created two subfolders and you have lesson plans in Microsoft format that you need to move to the Google environment. How do you move them into this folder called lesson plan? Just open the folder by double clicking on it, then click on new. You have two options to move files from your system into the Google environment. You have file upload or folder upload. If you're uploading a folder, it means everything you have in that folder will be moved or will be uploaded into this drive environment in this lesson plan. But some, most times I recommend using file upload. You can select multiple files and they will be uploaded at a very high speed depending on your internet connection. So you click on it, file upload. It will take you straight to your system. Here you can search for the files. Just tick or check the files and you click open and the files will be uploaded into the folder for you. Then if you need to create a document here in this folder, lesson plans already now, just click on new, click on the document you want to create. You can create Google Docs, Google Sheets, 
Google Slides. If you need more documents, you follow this path. You have Google Forms, Google Drawings, Google Map, My Maps, Sites, Google App Script, and Google Jamboard. So any one of them. So let's assume I'm creating a Google Doc. I can click on this arrow. I can select from template. I can create a blank one. So let me create a blank one and name it. So this is a blank document, a Google environment that I just created. I have to give it a name. Let me say resources. Okay, that's the name. Enter. And now this is saved to the folder. If I should go back to the folder, it's there. You see it here, resources. So as I'm working on this document, I don't need to save. Everything will be saved automatically to that particular folder as I'm working on it. So let's go back to the folder. So this is a folder. Now let's go back to the home icon, to the home of the drive. Just click on the icon to take you back home. Now, most times after creating folders, the next thing I like doing, I color code my folders so that I can easily differentiate my folders. I color code my folders so I can change the color of these first exams right now. Just click on it. Then you go to the top right, you see these options, get shareable link, share, delete, or remove. Then you see the snowman or more or more actions. Click on it. When you click on it. One of the options you have there is change color. So I can decide to change the color to any color of my choice. I can do the same thing here. Change the color. So as soon as I enter my drive, I can easily spot these two folders because of their colors. Then, most times as a school, as you work, you have to work together with your colleagues or share documents with management. You may decide to share a folder. And how do you share a folder? You click on the folder, you come up here, you see this, share. So click on it. When you click on it, you enter the email address or the name of the person you want to share this folder with. So let me take this. This is the person I'm sharing it with and the person must be within your school organization or outside, that is also possible. Then you can also determine the rights you are giving to this person here. I can give this person viewer rights. That means the person can only view the documents in the folder but cannot edit or remove any of the documents in the folder. But once I give this person an editor's right, it means the person can do anything I can do to any of the documents. The person can organize, the person can add, the person can edit, the person can remove the document from the drive or folder. So I'm giving this person the editor's rights, okay? Then sometimes you need to share with people who are not within your organization. When you enter the email of such a person, give the person viewer right, except you want to give the person an editor's right. It's also allowed, then send. So that person has been added to this folder. And wherever the person is, the person can access that folder and all the documents, even future documents that I will be adding to that folder, the person has access to all the documents. Okay, now next, maybe the documents you have in your drive, you need to share the document. Okay, so you can still share a document. This is a document I created called addition. You can share a single document with anybody. So I'm going to share it right now. Then you can also change the permission on that document before sharing it, okay? So let's say I'm sharing it with body also. So body will get that. But before then, I have to change the permission on the document. 
right now anyone with the link which means anyone on the internet that has the link to this document which is this can edit the document so i can change it to say no i don't want to give it to anyone on the internet i'm giving it to people only in fatima school so anyone in this group anyone in fatima school can edit the document no i'm saying no i don't want them to edit i just want them to view you can change the access right to viewer which means anyone in fatima school with this link can view the document so done then i can share it straight away with anybody in the school or copy the link and share the link with anyone in fatima school and they can edit the document and if i want to add the people i can add them straight away to the document using the same method just enter their email and they get access to the document and they can edit it then in the drive environment also you have two views how you view your document. Right now, I'm using the list view. The list view will show you the name of the document, the owner of the document, the person who last modified the document, and the size of the document. So you can get the views from here. So I'm switching over to the grid view. In the grid view, you are going to get a thumbnail of the document. So you see, this is how the documents will appear, the thumbnail. But I prefer using the list view where I can see who last modified the document, the owner of the document, and sometimes the size of the documents. So these are some of the things you do in the Google Drive environment and more, okay? But the point is the Google Drive environment is a general storage place for all the documents you have in the Google environment for education. So whatever document you're working on will be stored in the drive. If a person should share a document with you, it will come to your drive. And when they share a document with you, it will come to shared with me section of the drive. You see it from here. So whatever document that is shared with you, either by your students or pupils or teachers or management, will come to shared with me. If it's a folder, it will come to shared with me. The document that you used recently we appear in recent section of the drive document that you make or make of priority that you want to attend to all the time you can put them in priority section of the drive and once you get here you know that those documents need to be attended to immediately but most times you'll be working with my drive or if there is a shared drive shared with you you always go to the drive and the share drive and work on the documents that you have there. Are you with me, please? Just type yes in the chat. Okay, thank you very much. Thank you. So that is for the drive environment. So make sure you make the settings that I've showed you. Now, as my documents are increasing, you can see I have folders and documents. I have to search. Maybe I have thousands of documents and I'm looking for a document. And the person who shared the document with me, I remember the person, but the name of the document, I could not remember. So I can just enter the email or the name of the person who share the documents with me and run the search and the documents that that particular person have been sharing with me all the documents will display then i can pick the particular one i'm looking for so that is for the drive environment now right now we are moving on to the google calendar to get to the google calendar we go to the wafu or the google apps menu here click navigate to sites uh, Sites. Just, uh, um, no. just let's um, after each product let's let's pause and um, please again and ask them if you have any questions on the last part please the q a document has been shared with all of you um, click on that um, link and you can type whatever questions you have in that um, q a document even if you don't want to type in the Q&A document, you can also type in a chat box as well. If you have a question, you can type it in the chat box. 
please if i'm too fast let me know if i'm too fast let me know if there's something you did not understand about the drive right now let me know i'll go back there please so are we okay with the drive yeah let's go on okay <laughs> okay biology class please go on okay uh, i just have a contribution so um when you mentioned when you, uh when you discuss um uh, google drive i think uh you should it's just a contribution i'm not asking a question anyway so and your pace i think your pace is very good you are not uh, too fast uh you should give warning on permission setting uh because uh you could allow somebody to access your document not knowing that future documents you will be able will be accessible to the same person so that's one and the second one i think you should also mention is this uh the fact that drive the search power of drive that drive is uh, is very very powerful even if it's the word inside the content that you remember you can still be able to get the documents those are the two points i have to contribute okay thank you very much that's very great <laughs> Thank you. Can you see my screen, please? Yes, we can see your screen. Yes, sir. Okay. Okay, next we are moving on to the Google Calendar. So to navigate to the Google Calendar, click on the apps menu. From any of the products, you get the apps menu, except when you are in forms. In forms, you may not get the app menu, but you will get it in Drive. You will get it in Calendar. You will get it in, you get it in Drive here. You also get it in Classroom. So from here, let's we'll go to Calendar. This is the Calendar. Click on Calendar. For the first time you load your calendar, it will Sorry, I'm having some network issues. Okay. You can see my screen, right? Yep, you can see your screen, Joseph. Please go ahead. Okay. So this is how your calendar will look like, empty with, without events. Okay. So to create an in the calendar interface, you still have the menu to the top left. You have the menu to the top left. You can change, you see the day you are in, the date here. You can navigate between weeks, previous week or can next you repeat, week. Joseph, um, please. Joseph, you have to share your screen again. The, the, the first one was um, the, other, the other login you had. So now it's disappeared. So you need to share it again. Okay. It's coming up. Okay. Thank you. Yep, it's it's fine now. So you have the menu to the top left. Then you have the day here. Yeah. You can switch or navigate between between weeks, previous week or next week from here. So if you need to set an event for next week, you can move to next week from here. Just click. Or if you want to go to the previous week to check your calendars, you can go back and see what you have there. Okay. So then you can also search your calendar for events because as you're working, when someone invites you to an event, it will come to your personal calendar. So the events will be populating your calendar. You can search as the events are growing or increasing in number. You can make your settings from here then the view you want to use for your calendar, you can get it from here. You can choose day view, week view, 
the month view, the year view. You can choose schedule or you can take four days as it suits you. I prefer, I prefer using the week view because I can see the week at a glance, okay? Now to create an event, you can create an event from here. Just click on create. Or you just come to any of the rectangular shapes you have here, click to create an event. So I'm going to try the two methods for you. First, click create, you get this. To see all the options you have there, click on more options. Okay, so you give it a title. Let's say, yeah, 12 biology, sorry, biology class. And when is this class coming up? You can choose the day. You can say it's coming up tomorrow, which is Tuesday 8. And by what time? You pick the time, maybe 11.45. And when is the class going to end? The class will start 11.45 a.m. And you want it to last for 45 minutes, which means it will end by 12.30 p.m. And you also want the this event to end that same day, which is Tuesday. So pick. So it will start on Tuesday 8th, September 2020. It will end Tuesday 8th, September 2020. The event time will be from 11.45 a.m. to 12.30 p.m. Okay, now you need to add a video conference that will enable your guests or invited guests to join you in the meeting or visual meeting so you click here add google meet video conferencing the link will be generated for you up to 250 persons will be added you can select the location or enter a location you can see online if you have locations in your domain you can click or select anyone then the next thing you need to set is the notification what kind of notifications do you need? We have two ways of notifying you of an event. You can use the email notification or use the notification. So the first, I take notification 10 minutes. So remind me of this event 10 minutes before the event time. Then you can add more notification by clicking on add notification. This time I'm going to change it to email notification. So send me an email notification 10 minutes before the event as a reminder. You can see add more notification or add, add, click on add. This time I'm using notification and I'm going to use five minutes. Notify me five minutes before the event. So this notification may pop up on your system or if you're using a smart device also, using your domain email, it will pop up in your device, reminding you that you have an event five minutes to the event already. Then once you are done with setting up the notifications, the next thing you need to do is, if you have an agenda for the meeting, what you do, you come here, you can attach the agenda from here, attach agenda. You can enter tests, when you enter test here, you can format the test using any of these formatting options, bold, Intalic, underline, you can number, you can use different bullets. You can even add a link here also. Then you can clear your formatting here. Once you're done with all of that, the next thing you do is to invite your guests. So click add guests, enter the email address or the name of the guest you are inviting. So once you enter the name, the email address will flash up like this. Click on it. You can invite up to 250 persons or even more than. Once you're done with that, please do not give your guests these permissions except these ones. If you want your guests to be able to invite others to join the meeting, you can check this. If you want your guests to see the guest list to see everybody who is invited, you can leave this check. But don't give them this permission to modify the event. 
And you give that this permission to modify, mo modify the event, it means you have multiple invitations as the case may be. So once you are done with that, save. When you click on save, it will ask if you want to send an email notification to the invited guest. You click send. Or if you don't want to send, click do not send or dismiss. Click send to send email notification. And the event is going to appear like this on your calendar. Once it is time for the event, click on the event and you see join with Google Meet. So once you join with Google Meet, you join the conference call, just like what we are doing right now. You can also copy this link here, the link to this video Google Meet, copy it, click on this icon, copy. It has been successfully copied. And you can share it on social media platform. You can share it through email, you can share it through WhatsApp, you can share it through any of the social media handles that you, you have. Then if someone should send you an, an invite to an event, you have to come to your calendar to accept the invite or decline the invite. So when you click on the event, it's not going to look like this. It will look empty with a boundary around it with a name. Then you will see the three options at the bottom asking you going. You can say yes. You can say no. You can say maybe. When you click on yes, Automatically, the event color will just paint the event for you like this. The calendar color will paint the event for you like this. Or the color that is given to that particular event. If you say no, sometimes it will be grayed out. Then you say maybe, you still get the option of saying maybe. So most times, once you are sent an invite to an event, always come to accept the invite or decline the invite so that the person who sent the invite we know that you are coming or you are not coming and make the necessary adjustment or provisions you can also create events by clicking on any of the rectangles just click you see the pop-up here you can give it a title this time timeouts um what kind of events you can say okay out of office, this time you are saying you are not in the office, but let's not talk about that right now. So events, then you go on. I like using the more options so that I can see everything at a glance. So you can choose your time here. Here's the second method, just clicking on the rectangle. Choose your time, the event will end at social time. Then you have these special options here, you click on the arrow, you can say daily, which means this event is going to be occurring every day. Or you can say weekly on Tuesday, which means this event is only coming up on Tuesday. Every week Tuesday, this event is coming up. You can just set up the invite and everybody will get the invite and they will be notified that every Tuesday they have a meeting to attend. Or you can say monthly on the second Tuesday, but you can do some special customization to this event by clicking on custom. You can exploit that also. Okay, so add the conference, add the notifications as it suits you. You can change the color of the event here. You can also change the calendar you are using here. Okay. If you want to use another calendar for this event, you can change the calendar. These are calendars I have in this environment, but I'm using the one of Joseph. Then you can change the event color here, okay? For this event, I'm taking that color. And uh, I want my, my guests or people around, you share, I'm sharing my calendar with to see that I'm busy. Just leave it at the default visibility of busy. Then invite anybody I want to invite, then save and the event will appear here. So you see the color of this event is different from the color of these events. Okay, now the, the Google Calendar is also linked to the Google Classroom. In the classroom, you also get access to this calendar. And once you set up your invite in the classroom, 
and share the link with your student, they can also join you from there. Then to create new calendars, all the calendars you have, you see them to the left. So these are my calendars. Then to create new calendar, you just click on this plus sign on other calendars. You click, you see these options, create new calendar. You click on it, you can create your new calendar. You give it a name. Um, you can say, okay, family time. family time calendar you can add the description you can change your time zone i'm using nigeria time zone okay and it creates okay the calendar is already created if i need to do any special configuration i can do it but i don't need to do so i come here you see the calendar here family time so when I'm creating an event, I can select this particular calendar and use it to create an event for my family time or there. So this is a much we take about calendar. We'll still get to the calendar when we get to classroom, how to create a calendar invite and send to your student to join you in a video meet. Any questions, please? Well, I don't know. Hello, I can't hear you. Mr. Joseph. Yes, I can hear you now. Okay, can I contribute? Yes. All right. Now, I think the essence of calendar for teachers uh the, the most powerful part of it i actually enjoy is that you can set your timetable for students and when you do that you set notifications yeah. to remind them 30 minutes to their class maybe uh, 20 minutes and 10 minutes to their class so that they don't have any excuse for missing the class that's the most powerful aspect of it i actually like the notification yes yes thank you very much Thank you very much. I can see you are a very good user already. <laughs> Thank you very much. So you can do that using the class calendar for that particular class. You set up the class calendar using the calendar in that particular classroom so that the children will get access to the notifications. Or if you do that using your personal calendar, which means you have to invite them as guests to your personal calendar for them to be able to get the notifications and the invites or the meet link to join you in your in your visual classroom any further questions please before i hand over to my colleagues to take you on google meets and hangouts we will come back to the google calendar when we get to classroom thank you very much i'm handing over to mr Bode. We'll take you on Google Meet. I will be back after Bode. Thank you. Bode, please, over to you. OK, good morning, all. I'll be taking you on uh, just have a brief overview of Hangout, Meet, and Chat. If you can see my screen, let me know by putting the yes in the chat box. Okay. Can you all see my screen, please? Just put a yes. Okay, yes, that's good. Like Joseph said, if you need to accept any Google app, just go to, once you log in with your details, go to the workflow here or the Google app launcher or Google menu here. You can from there access any of the app you want to use. But for this session, we're going to talk about Hangouts. 
I want to, uh, from here, let me launch the angles. On the angle, this is the angle interface. I want to have a meeting with my colleague, or I want to have a class with my students. Like also, I can use this as a social, like the way we use social media platform like WhatsApp. I have all this available for me on Hangout platform. Like, uh, because some schools, they don't allow the use of phone, this Hangout is something that can be allow the staff in that school so that they can ease their communication. On the le top left hand side here, I have the menu for the Hangout. From here, I have the contact of people in my mail, all the staff, like in my domain here. I school to me, I have those people that have added to my contact. How do I add somebody to my contact so that I can easily communicate with the person? You can add students to your contact, you can add your colleagues to your contact, you can add the principal, anybody, provided the person is in, within your domain, the organization. I click on add here. From here, I can add the person's email. I type, let me see, like just if I can add his name. I just add him here. Automatically, I can see him here on the right hand side. From there, I can have discussion with him, even during the school hours or anytime once he's online. I, at the same time, also, I can have a conversation. I can create a group. Maybe for departments, we can create a group under that contact again. We can have for maybe biology session, chemistry session, the teachers there could have a group forum like what we have on WhatsApp to create so that we can have discussion on the on issue concerning our department. Below that, we can have conversation like what we have for chats. Like I said earlier, I just click on the person's name. From there, I can send mail, create a chat with the person. I can also, if I have, I can make a call. If I have the person's number in my contacts, on a, maybe on like we have for our normal Gmail where we save numbers on our contacts, we can, I can make a call directly to the person if the person is having his phone and I have the person's email in my contact. To have the person's email, what do you do? Just go the way I had it the other time. You can have the person name, you can have the phone number here. It record it in your contact. From there, you can make a conversation or make a call to the person. Let's see how we start a video call. I also want us to know that video call is also what we call video uh, Google Meets. If I want, I can make an instant video call to someone if I know the person is available online. Uh, and, and the other way, I can also schedule a video meeting with somebody using the calendar that you saw the other time. But I want to see my colleague. I want to dis discuss something with him. So urgent, I can make a video call here. Using it to take me to meet home page. From this meet here, I can just go there and start a meeting. Or if I have a code, I can join with a code if a person invited me to a meeting. And I want us to know that Google Meet, uh, Google app, they are somehow interrelated, they are related so that you can easily navigate from one to another. I have here, I start a meeting. These are all the invitations I've received for today now, the meeting I have lining up for me, that are, that for, that are on Google Meet. I can start a new one now. I need somebody to click on start a meeting. Let me use my name here, body, or maybe department. I can put it here, I say continue. From here, we can create a missed conference like what we are, we are now. And as, if I, once I click join now, okay, from here now, automatically, sorry, okay. From here, so I want to share maybe people are still with me here. From here, I can invite hard the person I want to have. Let me have Joseph. Immediately, I had him here. I can see him here. It sent, it sent out an invite to him. 
directly for him to join my meeting. I can see send mail. He receives a message concerning that I'm waiting for him online now. He can quickly join me so that we can collaborate on an issue or what we need to discuss. That is for the video meeting part of Google Hangouts. I can make a phone call also on this platform. I can make a phone call, but on this account, I don't have any phone, a phone number. From here, I come, if I try to make a phone call, I might, it's just loading my contact because I don't have phone number there. I can from here dial up a phone number to make a call to the, my colleagues, or even to a student or to my boss. Or I also prefer this, the short menu one, the short one, the messaging, instant message. I can just, instead of using my WhatsApp, if I'm online here, I can quickly uh, uh, reach my colleague here. I just tell him, this is what I need to do. Hello, can you be online now? I just click on him, he sends a message to him, which he can respond. Let me click for the person that is online now. So for example, Joseph is online. I can tell him, how are you? Just like what we have for normal, uh, or what we do on WhatsApp or other social platform. Those, um, and also from there, I want us to know that we can go directly also to just meet directly instead of going to it from Hangout. I can go to meet. Please, if I'm too fast, I want people to type on the chat box. Are you all with me? Okay. Let me go back. Okay, um, I put it up here on my menu. Please, you can see it on the left-hand side. I have my contact here. Click on new to add all people. You can decide to add, invite everybody within your domain. Type their emails. If you know their name, because their name, if their name are well spelled and attached to their email, you can type their emails here or their email, their names. Once you do, once you've done that, it will bring bring up the correct email so that you can invite them. Like I did for Joseph the other time, I just click on him like this. Just click on the email. But if I've not invited, let me see the person I've not invited before. Okay, this is somebody I have not invited before. You are going to ask me to send an invite to the person because we've not been shouting. Send an invite. I can say I. Okay, I send an invite. You will be able to shout with favor once your invitation has been accepted. From there, I can begin a new conversation without using my WhatsApp. That is one of the power of Google Hangout. Okay. Also here, I can create a group. Let me see, new group. I can save thesis. I can just type in the name of Joseph. I type another one. I'm adding them now. I can give the group a name, friends. Just like what we have on our Hangouts or on our WhatsApp. Now, I have two people in my friends group now. From here, I can send message across to them. I think this is going to be useful even for the, for the management, maybe they want to send a message to the department. From here, it could be sent directly to them if phone is not acceptable in the school. Use of phone is not accepted in the school. Hangout is going to bail out, out of this mess. I believe it can be okay. Can we try it? I'm trying to check. Maybe can we try and create some if you want to? using our own Hangouts app 
on our side there. Automatically now, she has this message as we sent to her. These are the people I have in my contact list now. I have all these people in my contact list. These are the people I have in my contact list. All these people, I can add no more person. Also, I can make a phone call. From here, I can also send an invite. I can send invites. All I need to do is click the person and start chatting with the person just like the way I did before. I will, I will be able to do that. Okay. Please, I will need message so that I can invite somebody to chat with on here. I need your email so that I can invite you so that we can chat live here using the Google Hangout. If so, uh, anybody with email so that we can use and see how it works, I can invite you and chat like we are on WhatsApp. Group. Thank you, Miss Mr. Biology. Okay. Let me invite you to my hangout meet. Invite, uh, yes, invite as we send to you. Okay, I have more than enough here. At least I have three people here. Okay. Now you'll be able to shout once she accepted. I want to, to accept my invite. I'm shouting, I'm sending it to another person again. Sorry. Okay, invitation has been sent to you also. If you check your mail, you'll be able to shout to me. Yes, Mr. Biology has accepted my invitation. Good one. Yes, thank you. That is what we can do with Hangout, even using the system. I'm all right. I'm directly on the Chromebook here. If you can see communicate without the use of phone in this school. Okay. Um, and I, I would like if you can duplicate with our own email in our school so that communication can go on on. on smoothly within the organization. I can see all the invites, I can invite from here, and this is very good. We can work offline on our Android for Android devices or iOS devices, Apple devices, even on Chrome. We can work with this. We just, we just need to do is to download the app and it starts working for us. But I want to show us one, one other thing. If we need to chat alone, we go to the waffle, we select the chat alone. There's R for chatting, for testing alone. Like the one I just clicked from the waffle here, the Google menu, I click on chat. It's give rooms for only chatting. All the conversation going on with him, between Mr. Biology and myself, you can see it here on the chat. You can see the, the conversation between the two of us. We can use chat here the way we use normal WhatsApp. But if you need to have a video conversation or a video conference, like what we are now, I go to Google Meet. That takes only the takes care of only the video conversation or audio conversation. I can go there and join a meeting like what we are now the way I addressed the other time. Let me copy it in the link, but so that it does not destroy our meeting, I will just, I will leave it there. 
I will leave it so that it won't destroy our meeting, it won't disrupt our meeting. I will copy the code, I will drop it in the chart. Okay, I'm into the meeting again. From here, I can copy the link, copy the link and drop it in the chat room for all of us to see. From here, I can create a Google Meet. I can send it as WhatsApp message. I can mail it so that anybody with this link can join me once I'm already. The only problem about this method is that I have to be available or tell the person I hear that so so time I'm going to drop a link for you, which is different from what we can achieve on the calendar. The calendar specify everything. But this I have to be there must be a prearrangement between ourselves before this can be done. I can see we are doing well with uh shots, mates. And at the same time, Google and out. I will be handing over to my colleagues so that you can continue from there to the next app. We can use this to make our life. Maybe I know I can have a student that maybe as we are on lockdown now, he needs to communicate with the teacher. He needs to have a class. Instead of going on Google and setting a calendar, you can just create Hangout Meet and send it directly to the to the person or to the colleague, and you get into the meeting directly. If you have another question, I want us to post it on the chat or on the Q&A before I hand over to my colleagues to take over to the next hub. Thank you. Any question? Thank you very much, Mr. Bode. We are grateful for that. So if there are no questions, we'll move over to classroom. Please, if you're using your official account. A question, please. OK, go on, please. And uh, to invite students to, to, uh, to our online class, is there, can you give us another way? Is there, I mean, the common way? Because there's one that I use in my own uh, class, in my own Google Classroom uh, class. The link is already there, whereby my student can, I will allow them to see the link and they join through that link. That would be, I think that's, it's, yeah, that one is easier than pasting it to all the stuff. Yes. Yes. Okay. yes. And the well. reason why I did not mention that now, uh, when Joseph gets to the classroom, the next app, he will show you as a part of the app in the classroom. Even when you share documents with your students, somebody, there's, a, there's a provision for them to reach you. When I get to the document, I'm going to show you that when we collaborate, I can call you directly from the document also. I'm just talking about the uh, Google Chat and Hangout uh, app. Now, what we can do on that. Thank you, sir. Thank you very much, Mr. Body, And thank you for the person who asked that question. The truth is there are multiple, multiple ways of doing things in the Google environment. For one particular thing you need to do, you get different ways of doing it once you are in the Google environment. So you are not restricted to using one particular method or you can do it any way that suits you than you like. So in the classroom, you still have the option to invite your students straight and they will join you in the visual meet and the class will continue. So we'll move on to the next app right now. And the next app is Google Classroom. I know we are all signed on using a official account. Please use your official account to sign in to your system and open the classroom environment there because we'll be doing some activities. And I want you to drop your, account, your email in the chat box. I will invite you to my classroom that I will be creating soon. Okay, I know you can see my screen right away. So let's move to classroom.
Okay, now I can navigate to the classroom using the WAF phone, yeah, the Google Apps menu. Once you click, you have class. Um, apologies, everyone. Um, Joseph is probably having a problem with his link. So he will join us in a few seconds. If, if it takes um, too long, I think we'll give him another two minutes. Um, if he doesn't join us, then but then we'll have to take um, um, the next thing that he's supposed to take and then Joseph will join us to take classroom. So but they just, just get ready. Okay, mate, Joseph is joined. Sorry, I had to switch networks. My network is giving me a problem. Sorry for that, please. Please post the email addresses again. I've lost all the email addresses I, I had access to before. Thank you. Okay, thank you very much. Okay, so I said, to get to the classroom, you just click on, then you select classroom. Okay, my classroom environment is loading. Okay, so these are classes, classrooms I have been invited to or created in this environment. You can see the classes, I have eight classrooms right here. This is a classroom interface. To the top right left, you have the menu. When you click on the menu, you have classroom calendar to review. Then the various classes that you have been invited to as a teacher or as a student. 
okay? And you can also archive classes from here and you make your settings from the menu. You can navigate to any of the classes right from the menu. Apart from that, to the top right, you have the plus sign. This is where you can create or join classrooms or classes. Click on the plus sign. You have these two options. The first one is join a class. So you join class. When you're invited to a class and the code is sent to you through social media or through an email message, you got the code, just click on join class and enter the code here. Once you enter the code, the join will become active and you click on join. Automatically, you, be, you become a member of that classroom. And you only join, when you join a class, you become a student in the class, okay? You become a student. But when you are invited to a class as a teacher, you have to accept the invite. You see it somewhere here, accept. So let's create a class. You click on create class. You see the class, create class pop-up menu. You enter the name of the class. Like say this time, the biology guy is active. So biology class. Okay. Uh, this time let's call it um, year 11 biology class or just call it year 11 biology. Then you can enter the name of the teacher, Mr. Biology. If you have more than one teacher there, you can enter their names just like that. Enter the subject, biology. Then if you know the physical classroom number in your school, you can enter it there also, okay? Once you're done, click on create. Or if it's a classroom where you have more than one teacher, you can enter the names of all the teachers in this session called, in this session here. Enter the names of all the teachers there. So click on create. In seconds, the classroom will be created for you. Okay. So this class has been created. I'm right now, I'm inside this classroom. But I have to go back to the menu, click on classes. I will see all the classes. And you see the class here, the 11 biology. Now, if you need to make any edits to this class, you can do it right from the classroom interface here. So for any class you need to edit, just go to the snowman at the top right of the class here. You click, you have the options to move the class. You can reshuffle or arrange your classes the way you view your classes. You can move this class down to the bottom because it's year 11 and you move year seven to the top, just like that, okay? Then if you need to edit, you use this. If you need to make a copy of this classroom to create another class, you click on copy. So to edit, you click on edit, you get back to edit class, pop up. So you can make any edits here. Once you are done editing, once you are done editing, you can save here. Okay. So let's go into the classroom and see some of the functions we have there in the classroom. So right now inside the classroom, you're 11 biology. You have the menu also to the top left. You can from the menu navigate to any other class as it suits you. Then in the class, you have four tabs, stream, classwork, people, marks, or sometimes you see grades here. Now let's start with the people section of the classroom. You click people. In people, you have two categories of persons. You have the teachers and you have the students. To invite fellow teachers or co-teachers to your classroom, you go to the teachers section. You use this icon, invite, to invite the teachers. Click. Now this is where I need your emails. Uh, but right now, I'm not going, I will not be able to invite you because you are not on the same domain with me to, that, to this particular classroom. 
You can only invite teachers who are on the same domain with you to your classroom. So the only person I can invite right now is Bode. So I'm inviting Bode. I just enter his name. You see the email pop up there. Click on it. Then invite him as a teacher. So I've invited Bode. Once he accepts the invite, the name will become Bode. Yeah. Then to invite students, it's only students that are within your domain, you can also invite to the classroom. Okay, so you, you can copy the email addresses of all the students once and paste them here. After that, press enter, then you invite them. Or you can decide to do it one after the other, provided you invite your student to the classroom. And when you invite students to the classroom, you can also invite their guidance or parents okay so i need to go to another tab another of my classroom let me show you how to invite guidance it's only when the students have accepted the invite that you'll be able to invite their guidance to the classroom so i'm navigating to one of my classes okay Now, when you are invited guardians, you invite the guardian for every child. That means you need to get the email addresses of all the parents you have in your class classes. All the parents. Okay, so like I said, I was saying, you need the email addresses of the parents you have in all your classes to be able to invite them as guardians for their children. So this is, these are my classrooms and I'm going to take one of them, okay? Let me take this. Then go to people. Okay. So you can see that the guidance have already been invited here. All the guidance. So the email does not matter. It could be a Yahoo email or it could be Gmail. The guidance email may, must not be within your school domain, okay? So once the child has accepted the invite, you will see invite guidance here in the middle, okay? Or you can do it from the snowman attached to the child's email. You can invite more than one guardian. And you can see that this particular guardian for trust author, the parent has not accepted the invite, okay? So you can invite guidance from there. You can invite multiple guidance for one particular student. And once they accept the invite, the parents will be getting a summary of all the activities that the child is doing in the classroom at the end of the week. Okay, so let's go back to our classroom. Now that is for the people tab. Then for the marks of grades, all the tasks that you have given to the children or students to do, you see all the tasks here and the various grades attached to all of them. Then we are going back to class work and stream. Well, before we talk about that, I want you to take note of what we have here, the settings. When you click on the setting in the classroom, you have various options. You can see edit the class details right from here in the setting. You can add class description here also. Then you go to the general section of the class settings. You have the invitation code. 
you can invite the student using the invitation code here. You can display it, copy it, and or you can just copy this one here and send it. You can also invite students to this classroom or teachers using the class link, okay? Then, next thing I want us to talk about is the meet, which was what one of us talked about earlier. So you can generate, for the first time, you will see generate meet link here in the settings. So you generate the meet link. Once you generate the meet link, you can make it visible to students, which means the student will see it in the stream section of the classroom and they can join, your, join you in a visual meeting at any time. But the advantage of this over the calendar is that it's only when the teacher has joined the meeting before the student can join. Okay, so the teacher needs to be there first before student can join you in this. But in Google Calendar, you don't need to be there first before they will join you. They can start the meeting before you come. But this one, you must start the meeting before they can join you. Then another thing is you can turn it off at any time so that they will not see it once the meeting has ended. And most importantly, when you're using this, make sure you are the last person to leave the visual meeting so that the link will become inactive after 25 seconds. Because once you are the last person to leave, the, the link will become inactive after 25 seconds, which means after you've left, no student can come back and start a meeting on your behalf. Okay? So that is the advantages you have here when you're using this meet link so once you are done making the settings here you click um, uh, joseph can i just say something here because i think this is important um okay. for security uh one of the things you find in schools is that when you give um, kids this make me link in the classroom like joseph have said if you don't deactivate it and they go back into your classroom sometimes the students can go back with a link if you send a link and not through the classroom. They can go back into that link and start chatting by themselves, and you will not know that the kids are chatting by themselves. And in some schools, they've actually found kids using the meet me link that the teachers sent to them to, to chat and do all sorts of things that they shouldn't be doing online. Yeah, so one has to be very careful there. Go on, Joseph. Okay, thank you very much, sir. So then another thing I want you to do, most times what we do in my organization, we turn it off totally. You can see that it's not visible to students right now. But you as a teacher, or the teachers in the classroom can see this and start the meeting. So what we do, we we'll copy the link. After generating the link, you click on the options here, copy the link. Then go back. What we do, whenever we know a class is coming up, we post it as an, as an announcement in the stream. So click here. Then you can say, okay, please join the class with the link below. Okay, now you need to add the link from here. Click on add, then click on link. Link. When you click on link, you paste the link here and add the link. Post. You can post it or schedule it to be posted at a later time. So it will appear like this in the class stream, and the student will see it like this. Once they see it like this, they know it's time for the class. And before the, before you post it, make sure you're already in the meet, video meet call, waiting for them. Because if you are not there, they will click on it, and they will not be able to join. Because the link needs a teacher to activate it. That is the advantage you have here when using the link. And this is how we do it in our organization to avoid. And once we are done with the class, we just come here immediately to this snowman and delete the link so that students may not have access to it at a later time, even when a teacher activates the link. Okay. Then let's go to whatever you need to share. You share it in the stream. You see it here. You click, hi, then you post. You can share selectively to some student. 
and you can share to multiple classes. You can select the classes here. You can see this. I can select multiple classes. Just check all the classes I'm sending it to. And uh, once I select multiple classes, I can't select student anymore. Student becomes inactive. It means the student, all the the three classes I have selected, all the students will receive this message. But if I want to do selective posting, it's only going to be for one class. Google made it possible that you only give selective posts using just one class. So all the students that are in this class will show up here, and I can select those ones that I need and post the announcement to them. We also use this method to give what we call differentiated announcements and classwork or assignments. So we only post to selected student. Then you can schedule it right away from here to be posted at a later time, or you can save it as a draft. To schedule, you click on schedule. You see your calendar here. Select maybe I want it to be posted tomorrow. The time is 8 a.m. Okay, I'll schedule it. It will be delivered at that time. And all scheduled announcements will show up here. You see saved announcement one. You can come back here, you click, you can edit it also, or you can delete it straight away. Okay, I'm deleting that right now. And that announcement is gone. So let's go to classwork. This is where the bulk of the work is. In classwork, everything you do in the classroom, just like in your physical classroom, needs to be organized. You organize your classroom here. So the first thing you do when you get to class work, create what we call topics. Topics that will serve as folders to hold the discussions you'll be, you'll be, be making in the classroom, all the materials. So to create topic, just click on topic. Uh, let me say this one is lesson materials. And what kind of lesson materials? I'll put the year, year 11. This is year 11, first term. First term lesson materials. Now, why do you have to do it like this? Give a name that is so long, year 11 first term lesson materials. You know, this classroom will be used by this class for year 11, first term, second term, and third term. And when they move to year 12, they will still use this same classroom. You just rename the classroom year 12 biology. Why do we have to do that? So that they will get access to all the materials they have used in previous classes, and the materials will follow them down to the final class before they leave the school. So they can easily reference any material at any time using that particular classroom, okay? So you name this one, year 11 first term lesson material. Then I go back again, create another topic. This time I'll say year 11, first term um, assessments. So first term assessments. So all assessment for this term will be here. I will add them under this topic. Okay. Then if I have, um, let's say, okay, let's take this two. So now we want to post material. The next thing is post material. Okay, click on material. You give the material title, human body for the week. Okay, then um, you add the description as it suits you. Then to add the material, maybe you have created the material using a Google Docs, Sheets, or Jamboard, or is a video on YouTube. You just click on add. If it's a material you have in the Google Drive already, you go to Google Drive. But if it's a video you need from YouTube, just click on YouTube. You can search YouTube for a new video, or if you have the URL of the video, just use the URL, paste it here, 
and the video will appear. So let's search YouTube right now. Human body. Search. You get different videos. As it suits you, you can pick any one. So I'm taking this. Oh, okay. This is two minutes. You can see it here. Two minutes. I'm taking this. You click on it. You click add. It's added right here. Okay. You can add more materials. Okay. Then the next thing I need to do is to select the topic. Where am I organizing this material I'm posting into? So I want is a material. So I'm going to put it under year 11 first time lesson materials. So I'll pick lesson material. Okay. So I can post it straight away. I can schedule it from here also. So I'm going to post it straight away to the classroom. It has gone to the class stream. And if you look at the topics that I have created, you can see it here. Under your 11 first term lesson material, you see human body. So all the materials that I will be sending to the classroom, using this topic to organize them, all of them will appear under this particular topic. And you can get them in the stream. Students will get access to them in the stream. Okay, this is it in the stream. So once they click, other teachers can see, and from here they can watch the video straight away. Now, the next thing we need to do, let's assume we are posting an assignment or assessment, okay? Assignment. You must have created the assignment using Google Docs or Sheets or Google Forms, as the case may be. So you come here, you give it a title, uh, let's say year 11, week 3, um, human body, human body quiz. You give instructions here, then you attach the material. This time, let's go to Google Drive. So you pick Google Drive. Your recent document that you have opened or used will show up here. You can change the view here to list view to see the names. So I'm going to take this, okay? This is Jamboard, it's a Jamboard material. So I want students to view, can leave it view file. But right now I want them to edit, it's an individual assignment. So I give them this access, make a copy for each student. But if I want all of them to work on it together, I can give them this access right. Student can edit the file. All of them will work on it together using this access right. But right now, I want them to work individually and turn in their activity, and I will grade them individually. So use this right, make a copy for each student, and each of them will assess it and work on it. So then I will choose a topic where I want it to be. I'll put it under year 11 first term assessment. Since it's a quiz, I can put a due date when I want them to do it last, maybe tomorrow, at what time? Um, let us, let me say 11 a.m. 11 a.m. Wednesday, September 9, 11 a.m. is the due date, the last due date. Okay, so I can schedule it to be delivered at a later time today. I can just assign it straight away to the students. So let me assign. Done. So you can see it under this topic is organized here. Year 11, week three, human body quiz. So this is how you organize your material for easy reference as the students are going higher, they can easily refer to the topics and go through their materials. And if you go to the stream, you see the quiz here. When they click to open, it brings them here. and they can assess the material from 
here. I think my network is slow. Okay, the next thing we are going to do is the class calendar. When you go to classwork, you have access to the class drive folder. The folder that's attached to the message from class, just click on the Google Calendar you have in the classroom. That specific calendar assigned to that particular class. Once it is loaded, you can enter your timetable as events in the calendar. And automatically, the student gain access to all the notifications that you have Um, apologies, all. Um, Joseph seems to have real problems with his um, data link, so he's going to join us very, very soon again. That's um, that's the problem with um, the environment that that um, he works in. Okay, he's about to join again. I'm back. Sorry for that. Yeah, I'm here already. Thank you. Sorry for that. I don't know what's wrong with MTN network today. Okay, so let's go back to where we were. So once you have been able to assess the class calendar, you can set up your visual, cal your visual timetable using the class calendar. And in this case, you don't need to share with the students anymore because you are using the class calendar. They, have, they all have access to the calendar and they can get the notifications of the various events that you have set for the calendar, okay? So once it's time for the class, they can join from there. But remember, there are disadvantages where you are using the calendar invites. They can go behind you and continue a meeting. So that is why most times in my organization, we don't use the class uh, Google Calendar. We use the Meet link there, copy it, schedule the link to be delivered at the class time. Once the class is over, we delete it immediately from the class. Okay, so that is for the classroom. The next, please, questions before I move on to the next app. Questions, please. Hello, Mr. Joseph. Yes, I can hear you, Mr. Biology. Mr. Moe. Sorry, um, are you saying, even if as a teacher, uh, yeah. after logging out, I log in yeah. back after two or three minutes to be sure that nobody's in my class? Are you saying, even if I use calendar, it's not still safe? It's not safe. Because what it's I usually do is, once I finish my class, because I know of 25 seconds, that after 25 seconds, student can, within the first, student can actually rejoin. And yeah. the link on my wall is usually not enabled. Once I finish the class, I, I disable it. So what I'm okay. saying is, even though I go back after five minutes and check, are these students there? So are you saying it's not safe? No, the point is, Make sure you are the last person to leave. Can you hear me? I can hear you. Can you hear me? Yes, I can hear you. I can hear you. Okay. The point is make sure you are the last person to leave the class, the visual oh. class. Uh, yeah, I know. I do that. Okay. And I know there's a 25-second okay. so, difference. But what, what so, I'm saying is, if I say calendar, what I can infer from what you said now is that uh, you don't, your school, you don't use calendar because you, uh, you consider it not to be safe. I'm not saying yes. that. What I usually do is I use calendar. But whenever I leave class, mm. like five minutes, to be sure nobody went back to the class. Because I know it disappears. I know it's, it's, it's not important for them to join the class back after uh, 25 uh, seconds. So I'm not saying that. I hope I'm doing the right thing. That's what I'm asking. No, no. When you're using calendar, they can start a meeting at any time, even when you are not there. They can start a meeting at any time when you are not there. 
that 25 seconds is only applicable to the meet link you have in the classroom. Calendar is open. Anybody you invited can start the meeting at uh, any time. Oh, oh, I think I understand what you're saying. But if I'm the one that created the calendar, I'm supposed to be in the meeting. Or, or you're saying Sometimes that the, meeting can, the meeting can start. Oh, I understand what you're saying. So I said that I can be half the meeting. I shouldn't initiate the meeting. Yes, in calendar. Yes. Okay. I understand. I, I understand you. I understand you now. Thank you. Okay, now, thank you um, the, what's what's the name of the guy in the, the biology class, guys? So that we don't keep calling you biology class. <laughs> <laughs> what's what's your name, guys? Can you? My name is Ayuade. Okay, Ayuade. Okay. <laughs> okay, there is actually a feature in um, calendar which is called named named link. Mm. Uh, most people don't use that. You can actually use what they call a named link in calendar, which will work as if you were in the classroom. Uh, yes. But that's that's going to be something else that you can we can show you. So if you use a named link, then it will work like the link in the calendar. Then it will only work when you are there, and when you come out of the meeting, nobody else will be able to use that link. But it means it means to do it means you have to do something when you are setting it up in calendar. But we can we can always um, show you that later. Okay, let's go on. Okay, thank you very much. But okay. but the point no. the point is that sorry, Joseph. The point is that setting up a meeting with your classroom in calendar um, may have safety issues because the kids the calendar one is open except you use a named link. It's open and kids can go in anytime they want as long as they have the invite. And they can even come back there after the classroom is finished, as long as they have the, the link. Yeah? Go ahead, Joseph. Okay. Thank you very much. So the next app we are moving on to is Jamboard. I love the Jamboard because it's a whiteboard that you can use online visually with your students. And you can all interact or you give individual tasks while the class is going on. So to navigate to the Jamboard, you go to the Apps Waffle, then look for Jamboard. Here it is, Jamboard. Click to load. Now, please, I want you to drop your emails again. Please, sorry for that. Just drop your e emails because I will be inviting you to the activity be creating here. So once you are on the Jamboard environment, you get the menu to the top left. You can search for your Jamboard by name or by the person who shared it with you. Then you can also order them. You can view, change the view also from here to grid view to row view, as the case may be. Then you can order them by anyone, owned by anyone, by me or not by me okay so these are two jams i have here already created that have been worked on by some other students right now to create a jam you just come down to the bottom right you click on the plus sign to create a new jam what you have here is a new jam Um, Joseph's link is really messing up today, so, so it's going to come back again. 
I, again, apologies. Um, there is nothing we can do about this except. Um, Okay, sorry, I think I need to turn off my video. Sorry, I need to turn off my video too. Sorry for that, let me share my screen again. Joseph, are you in some remote part of Nigeria or something? No, I don't just know what's wrong with my network today. MTN, yesterday was like crazy, now today again. Oh, okay. So we get okay, to the jumbo. You know okay. My screen is up. I hope you can see my screen, please. Yes, we I can. I need your response. Yes, yes. Okay. Yes. Okay. So once you are in the jam board environment, you have created a new jam. You can see it's on title jam. Okay. Yes. You need to give it a name. Thank you. You need to give it a name. Click on Untitled Jam and name it. So you can say Class Activity. Then OK it. So you have given it a name. Um, just, just so we'll get back, we'll get back in. Just, um, just bear with us. Sorry, seriously sorry about these network issues. Okay. Um, you know what we're going to do, um, but I, I think you should take the next um, the next product um, and just have we take Jamboard um, to, at the end. Yeah, please go ahead, buddy. Okay, good afternoon all. I'll be sharing my screen now. Yes, I'll be talking... Um, I'll be taking us through Google Doc for now. That's the first product I have here. Like I said earlier, once you want to access any of the Google app, but to welcome to Waffle here, there are two ways of accessing Google Doc. 
either that through the waffle on the top right hand corner or new on the left hand side here click on new you can see google doc from here you can see either blank document or from a template well let me go through the workflow here I look for google doc on the apps i have there google doc there is a Google interface you're going to Google Doc interface you're going to see. I have several templates here which I can select from. If it suits what I'm about to do. Okay, like we all know, Google Doc is just like a substitute to Microsoft Word we are used to in Microsoft environment. And I believe there are other things we can do with Doc which makes me to prepare this on the Google Doc, I'll click it out with blank sheet. Once I open the blank sheet here as a word processor, I have this is the Google Inter. This is the first thing I see with Google Doc once I open it. The first thing I was do with my document, like what we normally do when we use Microsoft environment, Microsoft Word. I need to give it a title. The title, let's call this one, because I'll be playing with Mr. Biology since uh, Mr. Adi, I'll call it animal. Types of animal of agri or the biology. Just typing it there, I don't need to, it saves directly in my drive that we were told about earlier. And I want well, the main reason why I prefer this is because of collaborative effects we can do here. Collaboration we can uh, achieve using Doc. Though we can do it on some other word processing documents, but they are um, platforms, but they are expensive. But this is very, very cheap. I can collaborate with anybody using Google, um, Doc, Google Doc. First thing, we, as we enter this Google Doc environment, we we'll see the menu tab followed by two tab just the same way we have it for microsoft Word. now i want to ask uh, i want to say this i want to share this document maybe we want to work on lesson plan in science department i want my hod to be there i want everybody uh, um, the other teachers that were taking the same subject to be there I share this document with them so that we collaborate this at the same time. Which what I'm going to do now, I'm going to make this file, I will share with some people, and I also copy it online so that everybody can have access to it. Let me copy from here the image that we provided the other time. I want some people to, like, let me copy the person to Mr. Alabi. Let's work on this document together. Okay, actually, I prefer the biology teacher because he knows more about animal. Okay? I'm inviting you to, I'm sharing this document for you with you to collaborate with me. I have it here. Okay? Done. But, I can receive access to it, to the document, either for you to view only, or for you to comment, or for you to be an editor so that we can work on it every time, anywhere you can. But here it's restricted to my domain alone. Only people in my domain can work on it now. Let me grant access. To grant access so that people can work on it anywhere in the world, just we click on get the link here, change link, so that will change editor's right. It's in view only to the people in my domain alone now. I'll share it to everybody with the link, anyone with the link can view first. But I want people to collaborate with me. They should be able to edit this file. I share the edit right to, editor's right to editor. Everybody online now can edit this document once I have the link. I copy the link, 
I believe Mr. Ade should be able to open it now, and everybody online will also be able to open it. Once I copy the link, I put it here. You can send it to any person, anybody we want, this, we want him or her to work with us. I want everybody to just click on that link and let us work together on this document on Anima to know how much you know about Anima. Okay, I've not seen anybody on it. Mr. Ade, I want your response here. The link is in the chat. I want people to clean on, click uh, on it so that we can collaborate here all the time. Okay, I can see Joseph there working on it. In the real time, can you, see, you can see people typing. You can see anybody working on your document using the Google Doc. Okay. Okay, this is collaboration. Um, from then, I can also, I can see somebody now, because you are not in my domain, you can, it will use anonymous name to bring you in. I can see Shita, I can see other uh, anonymous name, anonymous rabbit. Because the reason for I, that... What is what is you the Sir? Have you tied to the document? I've tied to the document. Oh, I've Okay, yes. You can see there, since you are not in my domain, you give you an anonymous name. But the person in my domain will get real name. Okay, I can see people putting a lot of anonymous Yes, that's good. Okay, let me now go. What are, if you, what are the things I can do with this? I can hard comment here and say somebody should do something. I want, to, I want to only one person here. I want to send a message to him. I can go on the top right hand corner here. You can see here I have open comment. I can write the comment here. Let me, I want to add comment on this. I want Joseph to work on that. I can add the comment, add the comment. I can even add the notification. I can add, if I want you to send a mail to Joseph that you want, you are asked to do something. I put plus in front of it. Plus. But if I want general comment, I just type what I want people to do. I can say, edit this file. Edit this file. I can comment on it. Maybe I want the person to do something there. I just click edit this file. Everybody will see that I ask, I, once you open the file, you ask you that I ask, uh, I want people to edit this file, edit this. But I can also go further and make it so that you send a, I'm directing my message to somebody. I can click on, just edit again, add edit. I can use either that icon beside it, or I go top here, I can open comment here. I can also go to inserts on my menu bar to put edit. I want Joseph to edit it because it's in my domain. I can click plus Joseph. It will bring out his name. Automatically now I say assign to Joseph. That means I want him to do this work. It will send a message to him now. It tells, uh, sorry, a mail to him that he should work on that part. That is one of the things we can do with collaboration on Doc, which makes it stand out from Microsoft Word, which is very expensive if you want to work on it like this. Uh, uh, what again can I do? I have old file, and I like you all, you already know, you don't need to carry folder anywhere. You don't need to carry your flash anywhere to do work on this. Once you have access to internet, just log in and start working on your document. But I have old file on my system, and I want to upload it to change it from Microsoft Word to Doc. What will I do? I have my former lesson plan or saw a document on Anima here. I want to upload it here. What do I do? I go to File from the menu bar. I go to I can just open it and copy. I can just make a copy. I make a copy or I just click on open my document. 
I click on, I, you can follow me step at the, at the time, just one after the other. I click on file, I click on open. Since is, if I have it on the drive, I go to the drive. If I have it on shared drive, I can see different places I can have my documents. But because I want this re residing on my laptop, as Microsoft Doc or Microsoft Word document, I go to upload. You want me to search my device for the document? Click on device. The way we up upload a normal way, I want to see the anima, document on anima. I'll search for where I drop it. Modify today. Okay, I have what? The major animal failure. Let me pick this one. That's the document I'm looking for. I pick on it and I insert it. I open it online. Automatically, it comes up. It comes up as Google Doc. He shown the same place as Google Doc. Okay. As Google Doc. And from there, I can make a copy. I can just copy the document and this is it. Animal, major animal failure. I can copy there and put it. If already now it has been converted to the Google Doc document now from Microsoft format to Google Doc. That's one of the functional, that is one of the functionality of uh, Doc here. And at the same time, what else can I do? I can copy from there. I can copy from there to update what I have in this Google Doc. I can copy here, just the way we work on our document before. and paste it here. And I can share the format of my text, the way we do it in Microsoft Word, just using all, all method we can by using all we have on the tools by here. And one other thing I like about this, maybe I'm, prefer, I'm preparing a lesson note. Mr. they want to prepare, prepare a lesson note here and he doesn't remember what to put here. Instead of looking for a textbook, he will just go for explore here. From explore here, on the bottom right-hand corner, you can search to enrich your document online, read time. You can search the animal. I can just get more about the animals here to enrich my notes. Three session will open up. I have I can use the web if I need test. I can use images if I need animal picture to enrich my document. I can also use drive if there is already existing on my drive. I don't need to go and open my drive and start searching. Once you're on the same page, I can do everything I want to do. It makes my life easy. It makes we working with. What processor is it? Okay, once we have done this, and I, how do I now? Maybe I want to go and print in a system that is not connected online. How do I go get my documents because it's residing online? How do I get it to print? What do I do? The first thing I do is I go to file again, I click on file. I will make it available in different, I can make it available in other, other formats. I go to download. Once you under the file, go to download. From the download there, you can either download it as a Microsoft Word that you can copy in a flash drive. You can download it as open document format, research format, or PDF, so that nobody can edit it after you are done. 
That is what we do. And the process, if I click it as, let me say, as PDF format now, it downloads it on my system away from the internet. I don't need to have it online now. I, if I, we are done with our document and want to save the hard copy, I can download it so that we can keep it. Maybe we need a folder or a file we want to keep it. Though it's, uh, since we are going digital, materials are residing online now, not on, the hard, uh, hard, um, on hard copy again. But we can see make hard copy of our document in PDF format. I can open it, this is how it's going to appear in the PDF format. That is how I download materials when we are done with the collaborative work we are doing online. What of if there is no internet access, like what my colleague is experiencing since? We are still in Nigeria, we should remember that. If I'm working on a document, that was a question that I was asked, somebody asked me the other time that, how do we continue with our work since everything is done online? One, one, one thing you can do here is that you can still work on your document even if there's no internet. Just click on file, go to enable, make available offline so that when there's in, uh, network interruption, your document is see available for you to edit, to open, and to, the only thing you cannot download it at this time, you cannot make a copy, but you can see edit your document perfectly. And you cannot share with, you can't make it, add a collaborator. But you may, what, whatever you have done here, once, there's a, uh, once your network is restored, everything synchronized with what you have online, so that any other person shared with can easily see what you have done so far on the document. Okay, the next thing I will say here is that, how do I, or like the way we are collaborating on it here, maybe I need the existing version Mr. John wants to get the file, the original file version. Somebody edited this and deleted all this picture. Somebody deleted this picture, but we want it back in this, in this file. Which you can, sometimes we find it difficult to get it using Microsoft Word. What do we do here? We don't need to panic at all. Somebody edited this document. I don't like what he has done. I want to go back to the old, old format of my file. I just go to dry to file on my right, left hand side. I go to history, the version history. I can see the person that disrupted our document. We don't need to argue with ourselves, just see the version history. You see the version history here. From here now you can see what everybody has done here. Everybody that touched this document since it was created, you can see what, is, what the person has done. From there I can revert this document back to the whole document. And I want somebody there to try to revert because I've given everybody ownership right here, ownership right here, editors right here. You can, I want somebody to help me to revert back because I removed the picture. Maybe somebody can revert, revert it back to when we had the picture. Go through the file, go to the version history, the version history, see it here just click on it once you click on the version you want you can now you can make a copy here you can change it to what we have instead of using undo button i want somebody to try that I'm expecting, I want to see my old version of file before again. Okay. As somebody is doing that, I also want us to um, look at can you Can you share your email? I've done that. Sir? What's your email address? Okay. Let me share it with you. Just send your email. I want to share with you. I've done that. Okay. You can have my email address here. Okay. 
we can have, we can change any file to what we have it before. If I don't want the editing somebody did on my file, I get it back to what it was before. Okay, the next one is I want to send this file and I don't want to open my email. What do I do from here? I just go to file again. I go to file. I want to share this email, this file with somebody. Let me go to file. I want to email it as attachment. I email it as an attachment. I want to use, let me use uh, somebody's name here, somebody's email here. Okay, let me use Mr. Alabi's email. I want to email him to him. I don't need to look for how to convert my file to PDF. All I need to do is just, I put his email here. I can send a copy to myself so that I will see the way it will appear to him. This by default is going to send this email, this attachment to him as PDF format, as, yes, as a PDF file. Okay. But the restriction I have here now is that this man cannot receive my email. Why? It's not in my domain. It's not in my domain. He cannot receive my email. Using um, email as attachment, let me use Joseph. Because it's in my domain now, you can see it becomes active. I can send it as a PDF order format to people in my domain directly. He sends it to him. I don't need to go and open my email before I can send a file to somebody within my organization. That's one of the things I can achieve using the good doc. Okay, I also want also, Miss, uh, have you sent it, sir? Check the chat. I dropped in the chat. Okay. Okay. This is another, it is a copy of, uh, from Mr. Adi. Oh, okay. Okay, oh, it is an exact see. copy. It is an exact copy you sent to me. Okay. Oh, sorry, sorry. Now, if I'm done with this document, I don't need it again. How do I delete? Because there's no delete button here. How do I delete? I go to my file again. I click on move to trash. If I don't, maybe it's by mistake that I click that. I go back, I say take out of trash. So that it will not delete the file. I go back to file to file again. If I click on move to trash, it deletes the document from my, from my drive. Because there are some documents that we just well, that we don't need again in our drive. Once we open it like this, I don't like the document again. Just click on move to trash. The, the document is deleted. Okay, from this are just the features that we have on micro um, Google Doc that I can say gives uh, gives it an edge over Microsoft. Doc, uh, Microsoft Word, rather. I'll go to the next document or the next app that I'm going to look at. I don't know, maybe you have a question concerning Doc here, for concerning collaboration. And um, before I move, I want to show us something. If when we are done with collaboration, HOD can make can be, can lock this document so that others will not have, have access to edit it again. Maybe after the meeting, after the program or after the collaboration you want to restrict it just go there but just go there those people you invited just shame the editor's right to give all of them i just let me the one i gave joseph here i just click on the, the editor's right that i have for him to viewer 
I can change the setting also so that anybody will now, by now, I believe you will be able to have access to it again now if you check it. Say now, you won't be able to have access to this document again. After the collaboration, the person in charge can go there and deactivate people from having access to that document. That's one of the advantages I have here. And I can have reference or references to a document here. I can have, let me see, I want to have reference. I want somebody to work on it. I will just highlight the document I want somebody to work on. I will go to insert link up here. I can insert link. I copy the website where I want the person to work on. Look for more information here. This is where I got it from, collaborative activity. I can, I'll just highlight the document. I'll go up here to the tools bar. I click on insert, that share like uh, icon. I attach here there. The person can, from here, edit anywhere. They can just look at, sorry, other resources on that ways that I want them to look on, look, to check up. The next app I'm going to talk about now is, uh, I'll be talking, I don't know if you have question, please, can you drop it in the chat box concerning what we have done, maybe? But okay, one, um, but then let's take a time, let's take a time check. Um, we've now done um, actually over two hours now. Um, okay, Kamal so. and, and the principal, um, we can do another 30 minutes. We'll probably just have to quickly go through. Um, we have about four products left, but um, I don't think we have time to do them justice um, today. Um, so either what we can do is uh, to give a few more minutes for questions, or we can quickly cover the remaining four products in about 30 minutes. Um, the other option, obviously, is to have to have to um, charge you for another session um, to finish up, which I don't want to do. So what I would suggest is that we quickly spend the next 30 minutes to finish up uh, the, the other products, except if uh, I'm actually happy the way we've done it because um, we've tried to take the teachers along for them to really understand these tools properly. But this is really the tools of their trade. These are things that we use for, um, for teaching and learning. So I will need feedback from Kamal and the principal, uh, what, what you want us to do. I would say that we can give another 30 minutes uh, and we can quickly run through the remaining um, about four products left. Um, or, what are the four products? What are the four products that are left? Okay, um, so we've got um, Jambot, which Joseph was going to um, present before he had network issues. We've got Jamboard and Sites, and we've got Google Sheets and Google Forms. Okay, so um, I think Sites would probably be the least relevant for, for the teachers at the moment. So if we okay. can just run through Jamboard and um, probably uh, so either forms or something and yeah, then I just say, I say sheets and forms sheets and okay. forms. so sheets, sheets and forms. is like spreadsheet yeah and then any questions in the meantime if the teachers can please just put it in the in Q that document. Ed document yeah. and then hopefully we can close out the last five minutes to so just quick answer this question. so 25 minutes on jamboard and we can speak to sheets forms we can do last i can take into that okay uh, so you, you're saying we should cover Jamboard and what is uh, and sheets? Jamboard and sheets, primarily, and then we can do forms if okay. we have time. All right. Okay. Um, Joseph, are you are you ready now? Um, yes, sir. Um, but then I would like us to transfer to Joseph at this time. So Joseph, I I would say um, let's keep the time. It's now one ten. Okay. So you should be able to get Jamboard done in in ten minutes. Um, and Bode, so for, for I believe you had one doing shades, you really got to um, just give an overview um, and you have another 10 minutes as well. Yeah? Okay, thank you very much. So okay. back to Jamboard. 
as you can see on my Okay. Can you see my you screen? Said, you said, buddy, I think we'll um, come on, go back come to on. you. Can you see my screen, please? Yes, your screen is live here. Yeah? Okay, thank you. So this is your jam. I've created a new jam by clicking on the plus sign and I've given it a name, class activity. So I have about three jams, I mean slabs, frames here already. So the first thing I need to do is to zoom. You can zoom the page to fit, or you can zoom to 25%, 100%, as the case may be, as it suits you. But I love using to fit. So But they please go on. Let me switch my network. Okay, I'll be taking uh, a sheet now for first. Okay, let me present my screen. I would like to know if my screen is visible there. Can you see my screen? Yes. Okay. Now, okay, thank you. From any of the Google app, I just take up the sheets. Okay, I will just say this, uh, sheets doc, and slide is just a, um, a substitute. We are not going to talk much here because I've done all the work in the slide in the doc. Here, yeah, this is the sheet interface for spreadsheet. The sheet, Google sheet interface. I have different templates here also here. I can use it for grade book. I can take something for grade book for, as a template. My to do list. I can use Google Sheet for that. I can use it for attendance in the classroom. I can also use it for a calendar. But so I'll be taking a blank one this afternoon. On this blank page, like I said in the Google Doc, the first thing we must do, we must title our document. Our file must be titled. I title my document here. Let me call it Sheets. Sheet two. It saves automatically in my drive. I can do what to all those things I said, we, all those things we did with Doc by sharing here. I can do that also with Sheets. I can put restriction, the ownership rights also here. I can do same here with Google Sheet. And I have my menu bar, and I have also the tools bar here. But the other thing, uh, the other differences we can uh, have well, here is that when we want to add a new tab or a new tab, yes, a new sheet tab, you just click plus arrow at the bottom left hand side of your sheet. 
bottom left uh, left hand side instead of right clicking on your excel therefore on microsoft microsoft platform just click on drop down arrow here you can do a lot there you can protect the sheet you can change the color of these sheets you can at the same time rename just here and i want to say this there's one advantage i uh, one of the advantages i like so much Clicking the test here, you can copy and paste severally with your test not disappearing after you don't click a after you click a share. And also I discovered something very, very good with Google Sheet. Let me take this for example. This one I have it here. On the left bottom left hand side, you have explore here. The explore here. What is it going to do? It helps you a lot. Maybe you don't know how to plot graphs. Once you click on Explore, based on the data you have on the sheet, Explore can suggest to you the different types of graph you want to plot. The different types of graph you want to plot, Explore can give it to you, and you can more. So that if you don't even know just what suits you, you can get it from Explore here. Okay, and uh, finally, before I leave this also, I will just copy and paste also on a chatbot to, to, so that all everybody also can interact here. I'm leaving the link in the chat box. And I can also make this available offline i download it at excel file of all pdf formats and that's uh, which is going to be very very good for us if you don't have internet access to access our data later thank you very much okay, um, um okay buddy Stop sharing. Thank you very much. Okay. Can you see my screen now? Yes. Play hey, here. I think, um, but they, um, what I would suggest is that I think you should take the rest of um, this. Everybody seems to be having very serious um, issues. Um, okay. Yeah, I think I think you should just take. But they them. please go on, continue, continue with the jambo. I think take the jambo, but my system is. Okay, let me put us through on the use of Jamboard. Up there. Can you see my screen, please? Hello. Yes, well, then we can see. Okay. okay. Presenting anything? Yes, I think I want to be sure that my screen is very good there. Okay, I go to the jam board. Just like a virtual board that we can write on, and the student can interact there together. 
I click on the new, or these are what we have done so far using Jamboard. I click on the plus sign at the bottom right hand corner to create a new jam. And it opens up like this. On this my jam, I have just one frame. That's why I have one out of one here. I can increase the number of frames by just clicking on the next arrow, the point arrow beside the frames, create, and I have four frames here. I have four frames here, I can go back. What are the things I can do on the Jamboard? I can change the background of my Jamboard. I want to, maybe I want it to be cashy to the student. I can change the background to colors I have here. There are default colors we have on the Jamboard. I, have, I can zoom it. If I have something on it, I can increase, I can zoom it. I can even increase, I can, I, know, I always prefer fit frame, fit to frame. On the left hand side, I have pen, which I can choose different types of pen. I can choose the color of my pen. Let me choose white because of the background here. I pick background. I can choose eraser. I can choose select on the left hand side here. I can pick up a shape. Different shapes, I can pick up different shapes and put it on the jam. I can put, pick up a test bus. Okay, I can, but preferably I like using sticky notes. The sticky note is be, below the arrow sign. I just type in here. I like contain what I've been using since animals. Okay, let me see. Kingdom. Kingdoms. I use kingdoms. I can create several sticky notes. And once I create that the sticky note by taking or picking any of uh, picking the sticky note from the left uh, left hand side, I can enlarge it. Once I want to enlarge it to become small, I click on it. You can see the point or the snowman there. I can click on the snowman to edit it. Either to duplicate it or to edit it so that I can add more ways to it if I want to do that. I can also enlarge it by just keeping and uh, dragging it. And I want to share with us so that also all of us also can work on this jump board before we wrap everything up today. Just the same way we'll be changing the ownership right or the editor right, the same way we do for all Google apps that we use in the classroom. I put it in the chart in the classroom here. I have it in the chart in the classroom. I want people to try to pick a pen and write on the jam board in the classroom there. I want so that I want we can make a collaborative work here. We can make our student to collaborate here. Pick a pen. I can write, say for example, I pick my pen here. I write five plus two is equals to what? I want somebody to finish that for us. I've not seen anybody on the jam. I can use laser pointer also to point out on what I'm doing so that students can interact. And from where, if I'm done with this jam board, I can click up here and rename it. Yes, I have somebody there. I can download it as PDF file. I can remove it, I can make a copy, and I can update it. Thank you, sir. Thank you, sir. Thank you, ma. I don't know. That's good. And we can save it and edit it in the classroom so that student, we can use it and even write on it. Since when we, as a child board, as we are teaching the classroom, we can write on it, anything we are writing, so that if you're having like a virtual class, we can use it to explain to our students 
I think it's a very good tool for online learning, even in the main classroom. Thank you. Okay, somebody just changed the background. That's good. Uh, if we have any question on the jump board, we can go ahead. Uh, actually, uh, can I go ahead? Yes, sir. Uh, okay. Um, you know, the issue I have with jump board uh, is that if you're not using um, a touch screen, it's quite very yes. slow. Or maybe you are using a work on pad with it. It's quite slow, and um, that's just the problem. Maybe everything about Jamboard is okay, but if you're not using touch screen or you connect with a work on board, a work on pad rather, uh, with a pad, yes, uh, it's very, very slow. Okay, that, uh, that's what we noticed. But that's what we even uh, like. Most of my students here they use a Chromebook, which is touch screen. That's why it's very, 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 very useful for them. Right, and when you use mouse. Also, you can see increase, uh, the acceleration can be, can increase using a mouse also. But when you are using just a pad alone on the system, it can be very, very slow. But, sorry, you know about work on tab that you can yes. use a pen, like styled yes. pen. Yes. That works also. And, uh, that, uh, so I'm for me, that. I think that's, that's fantastic option with your mouse. Also, with uh, if you are using the touch screen Chromebook, also it works very fine. Oh, Chromebook! Oh, I've never used a Chromebook before, so I've never used a Chromebook with it. So maybe I'll, I'll try that option. Oh, that's oh, why you we can started also, with it. You can download the app from Play Store and use it offline. Also, I think that one is faster and has more functionality than the web version. So you can download the app from Play Store and use it. The Jamboard app. All right. Um, thanks, then. Thanks very much, guys. Um, so we're coming to the end of this session. Uh, we have about three minutes left. So, so really, um, the floor is open for any questions. Anybody who wants to ask questions for the questions? Um, if I look at the Q&A document, there is actually absolutely nothing in the Q&A document. So I'm assuming that um, you guys fully understand um, what's been um, presented to you today. Um, but um, you do have time now to ask any questions um, you, you have. So let, let me just add one thing. The, the thing about this, of course, is we're also going to give you the recording of this session so you can still play it back uh, to refresh your, your, your mind about what um, has been presented today. But um, the key thing is for you to start practicing the things you've seen today immediately in your, in your classrooms, especially you, all of you teachers. I would advise that after this session, when you have time, please go online and start playing around with things. You can get the recorded video and um, start watching it and playing around with it so that you don't forget a lot of the things that um, you've seen um, today. Right. Uh, so... If there are no questions, um, I don't know, Kamal and um, the principal, um, if you have anything to say, um, please, you are free. Um, the principal, we can't hear you. I oh, I think there's I think something wrong. Having problems with uh, something yeah. wrong with your mic, I think. Yeah. Mm -mm. But um, okay. Well, thank you very much. But maybe she can type. Yeah, can yeah. We can type, you can type. You can type. You can type. Can type the and uh, in the meantime, I just want to say thanks uh, for the session. I, I think it was really helpful for the teachers. Um, we will, as you said, go back and practice with this as well as I have the, from Ibuka, the events, the, the kind of trainings you're putting on on the weekly basis as well. So I'll share that with the teachers for them to sign yes. up to the events thing. And 
Um, if you can just briefly talk through what that is, and then so they just have a bit of context. Okay, um, the events um, starting from this week? Yes. Okay, okay, good, good point actually. So um, what we're doing with Google from this week, and it's gonna be every Wednesday, um, I believe at 2 p.m. Nigerian time, um, because we have other partners from South Africa and Kenya who are gonna participate um, in this webinar. So this is something being organized by Google for all schools and um, teachers in Africa. So everywhere in Africa, they're allowed to attend this um, webinar series. There are about 10 of them. Uh, I, think, I think now it's even been increased to 14. And uh, what we're gonna be doing every week is actually taking each um, Google product and going into details of how, to, how teachers and students and schools can use the product. And so we're gonna have real life examples from schools who use this product, what they've been doing with the products as well. So you're going to have people from Kenya, people from South Africa, talking about what they've done with these products in their classrooms. So I think it's going to be very, very beneficial for teachers. Um, if, you can, if you can make the sessions, um, the videos will be available after, and you can watch them. So this is going to be one hour every week from now till, this, um, till December this year. OK, perfect. Yeah, so I think, I think um... Uh, that'd be it. And then we're also looking to getting the Google certification for our teachers so that we can speak offline and care about that and further things. Okay. Yeah, I, I think really that certification is um, something that I would um, recommend for any international school to make sure that they have this certification because it tells your clients, your customers, your parents who bring kids to your class that you have um, globally recognized teachers uh, who are um, teaching your, um, the students. Okay, perfect. And thanks, uh, Buddy and Joseph, as well, for, for your knowledge. You're welcome, sir. You're welcome. Thank you. Okay. All right, then, bye. Okay, so thanks very much, everyone. And, um, take care of yourselves and please keep safe. Thank you. And um, always make sure you use this mask. <laughs> please stop recording, please. Okay, thank you. Thank you. Can we leave? Yes, please, you can go now, please. And I'm going to stop um, recording as well. <laughs>